Hi, my name is Lei Gao, and this is my lab report on the motion of a falling object. So why are we doing this lab? The purpose of this lab is to observe Newton's second law on objects influenced by forces that do not cancel out or unbalanced forces, and also to compare the accuracy of computational models when accounting for one force versus multiple forces acting on a system. So the main physics ideas and reasoning. So we use Newton's second law, which is the momentum principle, which relates net interaction between the system and the surroundings to observe motion of a system. So in this case, the system will be a foam cube and it will be affected by both drag and gravity. So the cube is released from rest at a point above ground uh, and Earth's gravity will cause it to fall downwards in, in a negative y direction, but also the atmosphere will exert a force which is drag which points upwards on the cube which is a positive y direction. We are assuming that drag is smaller than the magnitude of the force of gravity so the forces do not cancel out. Thus there is a net force present between the system and the surroundings so velocity is not constant and there is acceleration. Some other experimental assumptions are listed above. So essential formulas, we use the position update formula, velocity update formula, the force due to gravity, and the force due to drag. And noting that the, in the position update formula, V average will turn into V uh, uh, vel uh, average velocity when we only use where we are only accounting for gravity. Here are some details to the lab, noting that the proportionality constant is 0 0.00173, and this was found by trial and error by running the computational model with gravity and drag multiple times to see where the last observed position aligns with the last observed position of the experimental. So for the results summary, accounting for multiple forces acting on a system makes the computational model more accurate in modeling the position of a falling object. So towards the end, the model with only gravity predicted greater negative positions for the cube while the gravity plus drag model closely followed the positions of the experimental. So here's the tracker data. Here I dropped the cube from rest above my head. Here's my code. Here's the computational model. With only gravity, it's initial conditions, so that the proportionality constant is zero since there's no drag. And here's the while loop. Here we use average velocity um, where to be initial velocity plus final velocity divided by two since uh, gravity is constant. And here's the simulation and graph. Here we note that the velocity time graph is somewhat linear, but the velocity is not constant. Here's the protocol to get the magnitude arrows. And here's the initial conditions for the computational model with gravity and drag, noting that the proportionality constant is 0.00173 since we're accounting for um, drag now. And here's the while loop, noting that the drag force is the proportionality constant times the magnitude of a velocity squared, which is also speed, times the direction. And here's the simulation and graph. Here we see that the velocity time graph is not exactly linear. When you plot all three models together, this is the graph you get, noting that the computation model with gravity over predicts the um, actual position of the cube. Here, this discussion, some similarity and differences are listed below, uh, noting that the computational model with only gravity over predicted the motion of the cube towards the end, and the reason for that is that the computational model with only gravity assumes no other force acting on the object except for gravity, and with the other of computational model, even though drag force is small in magnitude, it still affects the position of the cube, thus that's why the computational model with the drag force accounted for is more accurate and it closely, more closely aligned with the experimental one. Also, some sources of error are listed below, noting that the there could have been inaccurate centers of mass chosen in tracker at the t each time frame because sometimes the video was distorted. And also, we cannot calculate the drag force accurately 100%. It was only an estimate, which is why it also this computational model also deviates from the experimental by a little bit. So what does this mean? The terminal velocity definition is that the force of gravity pointing upwards has exactly uh, balanced the force of gravity pointing downwards. So by this def definition, none of the computational models predicted terminal velocity because then F net will be zero and velocity will be constant, meaning there will be zero slope, which is a horizontal line. And obviously the model with only gravity or a model with gravity and drag do not show that. So what if I threw the cube downwards initially? So the terminal velocity will not change because terminal velocity is independent of the initial velocity of the cube. So if uh, the 
the velocity time graph would be different in this case than the, when the cube is dropped from rest, but not by much. So if I set the initial velocity in the computational model with drag and gravity to negative 0.345 in the y direction, I will get this velocity time graph, which is not constant. So there is F net present, which means that the forces do not balance out. <clears throat> so conclusion, terminal velocity does not depend on the initial velocity of object and computational models accounting for multiple forces in the surroundings acting on the system serve as more accurate predictions for actual motion and the magnitude of a drag force is still assumptionally smaller than that of the force of gravity even for objects with small mass. Thank you.